Every 300 years or so, a company actually does something worth looking in the direction of. The last time I remember it happening was when canned meat became a viable solution to a birthday party near you. Well now, 300 years later, Topaz has entered our lives. Is it worth it? This video enhance AI, it's a lie, but is it a good lie? Let's find out. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So I first discovered this program when someone lied straight to my face. I was looking up the Canon R3 and their new 240 frames per second. And there was one video, only one guy. And I looked at it and I was like, wow, that is good. That looks like 4K. Like how did Canon do so well? And then I read the description. You know who you are, dick. And he was like, enhanced with video topaz. We wanted to see the quality of the damn shit and you ruined our lives. But it was fantastic, I will say that. Put a title in the video next time, you dick. You may have seen in last week's video, I was playing around with the free trial of Topaz and in that video I said Topaz is shit. Because it was taking so long to render, I was like, my goodness. But if you do something like this occasionally and you do it overnight, okay, you get some interesting stuff. So I actually bought the program and we own it now. And so I did a bunch of different clips, slow-mo examples, some mirrorless wildlife and some ridiculous runnings. We'll see them. So before we get into this footage, this is not a sponsored video. I make no money off you buying it. I'll throw a link down there just so you can click it, but it's not my link. I get nothing from this. I just bought it with my own money because it seemed interesting. And if you don't know, it's a program that can upscale your footage from like bullshit 480p to 4K. It can do it two times or four times, and we'll experiment with both. And it can also slow your footage down with frame interpolation up to 16 times. I pushed the limits in one clip. It's so slow that we will not be able to see it in our lifetime. You'll, your grandkids might get to watch it if they start from day one. And then by the time they're 90, they'll see it. So first example is Panasonic GH6. On your left is 4K 60p with dynamic range boost and on the right, I just enhanced to 8K. And I'm just trying to like punch in and do I see it? Yes, it's noticeably sharper and it seems to have way less noise too. I don't remember clicking that. There are options, you can denoise your footage, but I definitely see a difference. It looks pretty natural. It doesn't look like I just added sharpness, like they're doing some magic and it works. That short five second clip took me like 35 minutes to render. And the one I'm gonna show you with the pigeons took me just under 10 hours. Okay, here's an example of the Huawei P40 Pro. I put it in 1920 frames per second. It's a 720p file. And all I did was up res it. And you can see it's sharper. It is better looking. It's not super unnatural. That is a slow man happy to be alive. You can see some noise in the footage. It was kind of a cloudy day and a phone. You can't expect much, but that's one of the most exciting things for me is that I can still use this Huawei phone footage, get some 7,000 frames per second, and then enhance it. Cause it's 720p, it looks pretty bad, but I can bring that up to 5.1K. Here's an utter ridiculous example. I did the 7,680 frames per second. I enhanced it just two times, so it's 2.5K, and I also slowed it down two times, so 15,360 frames per second. Time is still, but we're floating, and we're heading somewhere in life. It's the slowest footage you've ever seen. Do you need anything ever that slow? You might. Don't pretend you don't. Eventually, he will make it to the other side, I, th I think that's a worthwhile achievement. Okay, last example with the phone. We put it in 1920 frames per second. It's 720p. And on the right, I did the max possible 
of everything. This is the one that took 10 hours to do. This is now a 5.1K file, 30,720 frames per second. It's so slow that you have to wait until your grandfather invents a time machine, comes back in this life to kill you, and then your child has to avenge your death, and then somewhere in that circle of life, someone will have witnessed the entire shot. It's so slow. Now, as I look at the wing details, you're definitely gonna see some of that frame interpolated movements, like, it's tough to do. It's pretty good though. I found that this was better than Da Vinci's optical flow because I still get that. And this is like more well tamed. I'll try to pick some of the more interesting moments within this slow ass clip to a little music and then we fly together. think I would ever go that slow again, but it's cool to know that you can get sharper footage and slow it down and all it takes is time and money, unfortunately. But I got a good deal on it and I was happy to pounce. All right, last couple examples. We got the Panasonic GH6 in 300 frames per second. This is the original shot, super slow. It's not the most sharp image, but I don't mind that look. It's Fantastic 300 frames, Penny boy. You done well, I enjoy it. So I took this and upscaled it to 4K and slowed it down to 1200 frames per second. Now this is ridiculous. I, I'm learning a lot here. I'm seeing that a thousand's probably about the max you wanna do for a slow-mo street crossing. There's, you think the slower the better, not always as we'll see in a second, but 1200, that's pretty magical. There's some moments where the hand gets a little freaky, but it's totally usable. Now, I'm not sure why I did this, but I maxed out 16 times slow-mo. This is 4,800 frames per second. 4K is damn slow. If you look at the hands as it passes through the cars, it's a little, little sketchy there. You can tell that the reality that you live in right now is not the one I live in. And it's a little slow, but I tell you, like I, I can't imagine anything more fun than this. In fact, I'm heading out today with the Leica 200 Prime GH6. I'm gonna try to get some nice 300. I'm hoping I get something with movement, 300 frames per second, and I wanna upscale that to 4K, slow it down. Eventually, I will get a shot, and so like, what I'm thinking is I go out, get a bunch of shots, maybe one or two clips. I'll enhance it and slow it down if it needs it. I'll decide, but this is fun. I'm totally having fun with this program. All right, last example, the chickadees. I've enhanced my wrinkly prune hands to 5.1K, and I do believe this was 1920 frames per second originally. And I slowed that down three times to 5,760 frames per second. It looks a little weird. It's definitely, it has this like sharp but smoothed, almost water painting image to it. And sometimes the motion seems like it's stepping a bit. I don't know, there's something a little off. This is a 30p file unfortunately, that Huawei gives me. So I don't know if I should slow that down an extra 20% to get 24p and then that might solve the issue. But you could have the most magical moments on just a phone. So should you get the program 
If you like slow-mo and you like enhancing your footage and you're not willing to lie to your audience, you're gonna put enhanced by Topaz so you're not tricking people into thinking, oh wow, that Panasonic footage looks so amazing. I'm gonna buy it through your affiliate links. Thanks, buddy. Oh, how come my footage doesn't look like that? What did you do? Oh, you spent a lot of money and time to enhance it? Isn't that lying? It's not okay to lie. Anthony LaPenny who watched your video. He made this video through the beautiful fall colors of New York upstate, Mr. Upstate. And he's showing drone footage. He's like, I just want to show you this beautiful footage. And then it was some sponsored bullshit. Wasn't even your footage. It is not okay to lie. <laughs> so as long as you put Topaz enhanced, something like that, Little side rant on Topaz for you photographers. I've talked to many out in the field who are shooting their bullshit systems and like, yeah, with Topaz AI, now I just, I've removed the noise. It's fantastic. My bullshit setup is now somewhat respected in the community. Wow. You need it because you don't have the skill to buy a better camera, you loser. I just see it a lot. It's cheating. This is absolutely cheating. As long as you tell people, because the photographers don't tell you. They put their little watermark, Dave's photography. Enhanced by Topaz AI with the help of other robots. That's what you should be on the watermark. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't like it. It's deceiving. But if I use it, I'm going to tell you I've used it and then you'll see it. So it's not deception. It's love and inspiration and friendliness, sharp water colored footage. That's somewhat slower, too slow for some. So thank you Topaz for inventing something interesting. I hope they keep updating it with new features maybe. It's easy to use, very intuitive. You can trim the clips if you don't want the whole damn thing. Not bad, save it as ProRes if you want. These files are huge. That pigeon file, that took 10 hours, that's 133 gigabytes. It's like, what am I gonna do with that? That's why I'm making this video now so I can delete that folder that's like 290 gigabytes. Who could even hold it? So it doesn't have to be ProRes. I should try some of the other ones, H.265. I'm gonna leave. Fun times, fun times ahead, tell you that much, tell you that much. I'm gonna go, after you subscribe, buy a Sony Reptilian t-shirt. Sony Color Science has been witnessed. Zeiss Badass, A7S III, filter, Black Pro Mist, in its abilities, wow, I'll go.